Welcome to Good Works Tractors. An exciting day for me out here. Have a driveway expansion going on. You can see the first load of gravel just got dropped off. It's the same stuff as what I'm standing on right now. We did this section, just the initial kind of get over the crud section a few months back. And after it's kind of settled and packed in, it cleans up really nice. It looks like there's a lot of clay content in there, but there's really not. So this is, gosh, 21 AA, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I, I should know this stuff. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is. And it just turns out looking really cool. You know, a lot of gravel, you can see some of the clay down in there, but it helps it, it's enough to help it pack down and kind of solidify, but it's not gonna be dusty. Like um, our other project we did on the other side of town was 22A, if I recall. A lot more clay content, a lot dustier, good for a, a sub base. This is more expensive, a lot more expensive. Um, but I'm, I'm going with this from top to bottom, you know, out there, the other project, I was gonna kinda do the top layer with this stuff because it's more expensive, do the base layer with the cheaper stuff. And you may notice we have some road fabric down there. First time using road fabric. So this section here, no road fabric. The other project, no fabric at all. Bought this stuff on Amazon, made made sure to not get the stuff that was Vivor, Vivor brand. Um, did not have a great experience with a, a safety cage. Turns out when this showed up, it had a Vivor tag on it. So I, I got the Vivor anyway. I think it was about 750 or 800 bucks. This is about 500 foot that we're putting in the expansion right now. And so a dollar and a half a foot, something like that for this road fabric. A lot of guys, rave about it whether not this particular fabric but road fabric in general so we're going to see if it's worth its weight in gold and so anyways i i saw a recent article five tips to maintain your gravel driveway you know i like to check that stuff out see if i'm forgetting something learning something new everything else so we're going to go through that article today that i saw those different tips to maintain your driveway and those are all going to be for after your driveway is installed but one of those big tips potentially is getting this road fabric down there or stripping off all your topsoil so that you're not having organic matter that you're putting your stone down on. So we'll have to do a long-term test and see how this works for us, but I think it's gonna prevent stone from sinking down, hopefully prevent some weed growth from occurring as well, less maintenance right from the get-go. So this article is from House Digest, five pointers for maintaining your gravel driveway. Well, their gravel driveway in the picture looks way nicer than mine right away. But number one, deal with the weeds, all right? Weeds are something that can allow a driveway to just get out of control and in fact there is a section well we did an expansion on our other property okay where we we widened this turnaround out there with gravel and we didn't do that until this spring all right so it was the most recent thing that we'd done well that stone didn't really get packed down in there it wasn't driven over much we actually haven't been out there very often since that point point. and so that that lack of traffic that's compacted or not compacted everything has allowed weeds to come up through that like crazy versus the other, the remainder of the road that we have out there has been packed down, tightened and really made a difference. And so even just that continual repetitive traffic, packing it down, firming it up where there's no real place for weeds to grow has made a difference. But if you do have a weed problem, of course you can spray it, right? A lot of folks do want to get away from sprays whenever you can, totally get that, but that means you need to disrupt the surface then as well. So if you get a, a box blade or a land plane or a landscape rake, if you have any of those tools, you know, it's, it's great not just to level it out and take potholes out, but also just to kind of prevent those weeds from really taking root and, and having some place to grow and develop and become a worse problem. All right, so next one up is for fixing potholes, right? And that's just kind of a, a natural thing that's gonna happen with a gravel driveway. This is, you know, relatively loose material compared to concrete or asphalt. It's just gonna happen, right? And so if you're just 
kind of going over the, the, the top of it, you're not really getting to the root or the base of the problem. What you need to do is take your box blade, take your rake, take your lamp plane, whatever it is, and really scrape away a lot of material. Get all the way down to the bottom of that pothole. It could mean going back 10, 15 feet on either side, potentially just depending on your scenario there, but get it all the way down to the bottom and then start over from that way. So it, it's like that pothole never even existed. Otherwise, they just have a tendency to kind of come back to life. It's, it's really strange. So don't think that you're just going to kind of fill some stuff over the top and call it good. You got to start all the way at the bottom. It takes a little bit more time, a little bit more work. You feel like you're, you're ruining more of your driveway doing that, but the long-term effect is going to be much better. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Next one up I think goes without saying and that is just to grade your driveway on a regular basis and the article says to do it in the spring and the fall definitely the spring right winter time especially up north you know a lot of heaving and, and freeze thaw cycles throughout the winter um, can create havoc right and that's where you can get a lot of those potholes and and just different problems that are going on and so you definitely want to do that in the spring and you know and I got pretty excited this past spring and did it when it was just still too wet it, it did a good job it was kind of a, a muddy mess but it had the intended effect and it, it, in some ways it made it easier to work with those potholes. Now the flip side, they say to do it in the fall right before winter so you got a nice smooth driveway going into winter. Yes and no. I think do it in as early a fall as you can or even late summer if you can do it because you want to have plenty of time to drive over, pack things back down. Otherwise, if you are gonna be removing snow, that stone that has not been packed down for a good amount of time is gonna have a tendency to wanna get shoved off the drive or go through the snow blower or whatever it is. And yeah, you have skid runners or skid shoes, hopefully on your snow removal equipment to get above. So that cutting edge is above the stone. But still for me, I would like to have as much time as possible, give myself an advantage and let that stone get packed back down. Now going along with grading, hopefully you can kind of see this crown. The center here is the high point point. it slowly tapers off to either side. Now, the reason you want to do this is to prevent those puddles and those pools from being somewhere in the middle of your driveway, which are going to, well, create just different problems of, of all kinds. So if you can, you know, use, well, it's easier to do with a land plane or a landscape rake because you can angle those. Well, you can angle a landscape rake and a land plane, the blades are, are angled well, six, seven, eight degrees, something like that, so that it kind of pulls and draws material to one side and makes it easier to put this crown in your driveway. A box blade, you can do it with that. It just takes a little bit more uh, finesse, a little bit more experience to do it with a box blade, but it is a pretty good multi-purpose tool. And now for me, the flip side of that is I've got part of this expansion that we have going on that's kind of on a, on a sideways slope like this. And I'm gonna experiment, I haven't done it before, but trying to keep it basically flat so maybe the water will run across like a sheet of water and it could end up putting all sorts of channels and grooves and washouts throughout my driveway left to right but I'm going to experiment and find out and that's the kind of thing that for me is with a, the right tool a land plane or a landscape rake is easy to fix I can still put that crown back in there if I want to but I'm going to experiment with a bit of a flat area to see if that water can run right across all right so their next tip is to invest in quality gravel so if you did that in the beginning, good job. If you're looking to maybe renovate your driveway as kind of part of your maintenance and just add more gravel on because it's just washed out or been pushed off the drive or just sunk down or whatever the case is, talk to your local aggregate company, all right? So that, like the company I'm using today, Balkama uh, Excavating is, is helping me out and they've been a great resource. When I bounce questions off them on what's the right material to get for this, that, the other thing, what's the road commission using, what's What's the most popular? What do you guys recommend? You're the one with experience, so tell me what I should use for this area. And the one thing I've learned is that depending on the part of the country you're in is gonna make a big difference, all right? And it's not that they might not have the same material in another state, but they could call it something completely different or they're gonna have just different aggregate down there and that's gonna be what's recommended for that area, whatever the heck it is. So if you see this video, that's something that I struggle with in trying to find the right products is different 
like in the south or out west or in the plains or wherever, you know, they'd use such and such material and I'd call around here and nobody had that. So you gotta find what works for your area and what makes the most sense. But the point is you wanna get a material that packs in well together. So you have some varying sizes of stones here. You do have some clay content that you can see down underneath as well, but it's allowing everything to pack together really tight and stay in place. So something like pea gravel is not gonna do that. Um, river rock is not the most ideal, but it just depends on your setup and your situation. So if you need to top dress, get the right material, it's gonna save you money in the long run. Okay, so tip number five, they say get long-term solutions. And, and really, you know, that kind of encompasses everything we've talked about, getting the right tools to get the job done, you know, instead of just going to Lowe's and buying a bag of gravel and dumping it in there, I suppose. You know, if you have a small driveway, get a tamp. Um, if you have a bigger driveway and a machine, you know, whether it's a, a um, an ATV or UTV, or if you have a tractor, get a pull behind type of tool that can just help you do multi-purpose jobs, grading, maintaining. If you want to have a company come drop off a load of gravel, you can spread it out with that too. I, I feel like this would cost so much. They say if you want to hire somebody to do it, the cost is typically one to three dollars per square foot if you want to hire a contractor to come in and do it. So if that's the case, I feel like getting some tools could help you save a lot of money really quick. But who knows, maybe some of you guys do that work and you can tell me, are they on track? One to three dollars per square foot to come in and grade out your driveway. Let's just say 500 times 13 foot wide times two. That's $13,000. That doesn't make any sense. I'd sure like to know where they're getting that kind of rate. Alrighty folks, that's gonna wrap it for us today. We should have another load coming soon. Just for reference, they think to get from point A to point B down there, it's gonna take 100 yards, 150 tons. I think it's 10 yards or 15 tons per truckload that they bring in. So we're gonna see if that's in the ballpark or not. It should be, it should be fairly close. But we do have a phase three coming up too, going down the lane in between the fences you guys might have seen in our videos, but uh, that's gonna be another project in and of itself. So if you've got some other tips for folks, that's what this channel's all about. Just helping each other out. You know, a lot of new tractor owners coming on board, moving out to the country, that kind of thing. So if you have something that can make somebody else's life easier, <laughs> let's help shorten that learning curve and leave a comment down below. And if you're in the market for one of those tools to grade out your driveway, well, we'd love to help you out. Go to goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country. If you enjoyed today's video, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button down below. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. This is the food plot update. All right, so two, three weeks ago, we were standing here and it was up to the shins. And this stuff kind of once it gets going, it seems like it just takes off. So it is inconsistent. It's not all that tall, but that's like as tall as my head already getting there. And we still have at least a month of growing season left. Um, but other areas, it's, it's probably only chest high, right? So it's a little inconsistent, but it's all gonna get there. I think I've uh, realized that I wanna plant this wider next year, a wider overall uh, pass of it, just because once it dries out, I think it'll probably shrink and be easier to see through. But this is just my first year, and this was a late planting too. Um, I broadcast this stuff in case you don't remember. Um, we drilled it in over, or, or we used a, a cedar, I should say, over at the other property, and that had a little bit better germination results. But here's a look at the food plot as well. Um, we did spray this twice with Roundup. It gave everything a good start to get ahead of the weeds, but uh, there's still definitely some weeds that are coming back in here, so there's some competition. But we have all sorts of cereal grains, uh, clovers, brassicas that are gonna fill this out, and even if I don't come through and spray again for weeds, I, th I think I'll be okay. Uh, most of uh, what I wanted to grow, I think has already been pretty well established and has a good jump start, and, and eventually as it grows up taller, it's gonna uh, shade out and crowd out all those weeds. And so we should be in good shape, but uh, good look at it here. Chris will put up on the screen how many weeks since we planted the food plot too. I don't know, maybe it's been three or four weeks now, something like that, but it's coming along. And I almost forgot, this is Northwoods Whitetails, all their food plot products. Again, this tall screening material looks like corn, but it's not, it's not sorghum either. There's nothing edible on the screen, so animals don't wanna come in and kinda of knock it all down and destroy it. Stays up longer that way. And then all these different uh, food plot um, seeds that we planted in here, again, all from Northwoods Whitetails. And of course, we are a Northwoods Whitetails dealer. After, it's like once it gets going, it gets going. I wanna stand over here though, where we, and then I'll back out, but I think it's gonna be funny. Like this is where, ah. Same spot we were standing a couple weeks ago when it was shin high or a few weeks ago. Can you hear me? Yes. All right.